Hey there traders, I'm Champion Trader Kevin Davey and here's another strategy, algo strategy that I'm gonna test. Let's get started. Today's strategy I'm gonna test are with stochastics. Slow and sweet is the way I like to think of them. First off, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. All right, let's talk about this system. This is just a simple standard stochastic crossover. There's not gonna be really anything really unique about it. Just wanted to test some of the basics, some of those traditional ones that you've heard about. If you don't know what stochastics are, make sure you go to like Investopedia and learn about them. More or less what it means is if you have a high and low and the close is towards the high, that means something compared to if the close was near the low. And stochastics is kind of what measures that, okay? I'm also gonna have a closing stop with this. The rules, calculate the stochastics with a length, uh, that should say L, it looks like a one. Uh, and then when the percent K line crosses over the percent D line and the K is above a certain threshold, you go long. If you're like, what's percent K, what's percent D? Again, I'm not going to talk about it in this video. I'll assume you already know it. Go to Investopedia or another site and it'll tell you all about stochastics and the theory behind them. Basically, the percent K and D lines are kind of like smooth values of the raw stochastic. That's the way you got to think about it. Here's trade station code. You can see what it does is it just calculates the stochastic. It's a trade station function, and there's a lot of little parameters, but what it returns is a, a slow K and a slow D. And if the slow K crosses over the slow D and the slow K is below a certain amount, then you buy. And if it crosses under and the slow K is greater than 100 minus amount, so this stochastic goes from zero to 100, it's kind of like an oscillator, then you sell short. And then at the close of every bar, if you go below a certain price as far as how much money you've lost in that trade then you exit the next bar at the open that's it for the code three different variables that i'm optimizing they're listed here and it's 27 iterations total again you've seen my other videos i'm sure you know by now i don't optimize a lot i try to limit the amount of optimization my experience is the more optimization you do, the more curve fitting, and the more over optimizing you can do. I mean, I've seen people run millions and millions of iterations. There's people who say, oh, I gotta use genetic optimization. Doesn't necessarily get them anywhere. So just keep that in mind. Usually fewer iterations, the better. Of course, that does make it a lot tougher to develop systems, so, and to create decent looking back tests. So they're, it is a caveat to that. Here's some sample trades, and you can see the stochastics, the fast and the slow, and when they cross and you know reach those thresholds, that determines your buy and sell. So you might say, well, why should I listen to you? You know, who are you? What are you doing? If you've never seen any of my videos before, Go to Amazon, check out some of my best-selling trading books. They might not be best-sellers today, but at one time, all of these were best-selling trading books, especially in the futures markets. Uh, the one book is more of a stock market book, but the rest are primarily futures. I think I have at least a little bit, a little bit, a little teeny bit of credibility with the trading community. Hopefully it's a little bit more than that, but okay. Anyhow. Check out my books. Preliminary results I like to test over two years. 71 different markets and bar size combinations look what I would consider robust. 
So I have some criteria for what robust is. I teach this in my class, but just to let you know, it, it does mean that a lot of those iterations I talked about earlier are profitable. So it's not just one peak point that was good. It's got a lot that were good. Here's some walk forward results. This is Coco 360 minute bars. Um, this looks pretty nice. Although there are some significant drawdowns. And again, if, if your point or your goal is to eliminate all drawdowns, uh, you're going to be sadly disappointed in real time. You can eliminate this in back testing pretty much no problem. Uh, a little problem, but you could eliminate drawdowns. Doesn't mean it's going to work going forward. So I tend to go for equity curves that are a little lumpier than I follow a process that leads to good real-time performance. Here's another cocoa, and I did this just to show sometimes you can have multiple bar sizes with the same instrument that work. This is 1440 minute. Now it's a pretty much a different looking equity curve. It goes up and to the right, but has a big flat period. You might be able to trade both of these systems together and not be very correlated, even though they're both cocoa. And that's something that's an important part of diversification. It's not only diversification in different markets, but sometimes you could trade different bar sizes and still get diversification. Something to consider in your own trading. Trading potential, well, when I look over the last 15 years, there's not a lot here with this particular system. Coco seems to, to take three of the four spots, uh, and then there's a silver, but um, just not a lot that passed the walk forward testing. So yeah, there's potential, and maybe this will be a good system, but there's a lot of markets that don't work. And I know some people out there like to say, oh, it's got to work in 10 different markets. It's got to work in five different markets with all these different bar sizes, blah, blah, blah. My experience, even if it works one market, one bar size, I still will trade it if it passes all my tests. Yes, it would be nice if it worked in 10 different markets, but it's not a showstopper if it doesn't. And... I think a lot of people limit themselves by saying, oh, it's got to pass 10 different markets. Hey, you're throwing away a lot of potentially good systems that way. Uh, but if it gives you more confidence and you like it and you've proven it works, then I say go for it. It's all about what works for you and what you feel comfortable with. It's your money, right? Not a fully proved strategy. I still have some steps to go through to it to uh, finish it. It is robust. And as always, test yourself. Test yourself and test the strategy yourself before you trade it. What do I mean by test yourself? Walk the equity curve. Pretend you're walking the equity curve. You're a mountain climber, okay? Would you be able to survive those deep drops? You know, when you fall into that drawdown, or would you get discouraged? You know, that's that's a neat way to think about it. Um, there'll be times where you don't see the, the summit of the mountain, where, hey, I'm in a new equity high. You'll just see that you're headed down. Think about it. Test yourself and test the strategy. Okay. Well, if you have an idea to test, maybe it's some kind of simple system you want me to test. If it's programmed into TradeStation and it's not too complicated, send it to me. Send it via email. You can go to my website, get all my contact info. Maybe I'll test it in a future video where I run it through 50-some markets and six different bar sizes. And if it works, I'll definitely give you credit for it, okay? All right, in the meantime, leave a comment. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know if these videos are helping you. Um, you know, obviously they take time for me to do this research. And if these are just complete joke videos, 
let me know. I'll stop making them. You know, I get better things to do to my time than uh, not entertain people and not inform people. All right. Well, I'm Champion Chair Kevin Davey. Have a great day.